Hello Lola's, welcome back to my world. So today I'm just gonna show a glimpse of some of the babies in the crib as I speak to you guys about a few things. Now keep in mind I am holding the camera so it's gonna be a little shaky, a little wobbly. Y'all know I got bad nerves so I tremble. No, I'm just kidding. I should make fun of that. But, <laughs> but you know, I'm goofy and I'm clumsy and I am not that good with technical stuff. So let's start over here where it's a whole bunch of babies and i am going to say that these are my little prized little possessions i of course i love all of my babies and when babies first arrive i have like this extreme love for them i'm so excited about them they're never leaving the nursery and then you know sometime that fades and that changes and sometime I want them to go ahead and move on to other mommies and I want to move on to new dolls and that's kind of how this hobby happens because it's very addicting um now don't mind London she has a little bit of bed hair I haven't brushed her hair I try not to brush in the baby's hair hair as much and she was actually turned to that side so that's why that side is a little unkept but anyway, so let's go down the list. I'm just going to name the babies really quickly. And then I'm going to give you guys a quick uh, little overview of what I want to talk about later in our next live stream where I actually come and sit down and have sip some tea with you guys. All right. Or coffee. <laughs> um, so we have Lily Grace. We're starting from left to right. Um, we have Lily Grace. She is the uh, Make Asleep by Audrey Stoetti, which I know I'm probably butchering her name, but hey, it is what it is. I absolutely love this sculptor's work. Um, I have next is Piper. Piper is little, no, sorry. Piper is Half Pint by Marita Winters. Again, love her preemies. Always love the way she does her preemies. Um, the next one is, of course, Aspen. Um, Aspen by Claire Teller, painted by Sylvia, um, Esquire, which is Sylvia Creations. Now keep in mind, um, most of my babies are painted by me, but some are not. And if I forget to say who is painted by, that means that is painted by me. Um, the next one is the same sculpt, which is Aspen. Both of these are the prototype babies. So I have, uh, the other Aspen um, and he kept his name Aspen, uh, by, sculpted by Claire Teller, painted by me. Um, and then we have Baby Kenya, and Baby Kenya is Soraya by Laura Tudor Ross, and painted by Pickles and Tea. Some of you guys know her as Asha or Captive Hearts. Um, and she is my more newer baby, my little love bug. And so these are some little special babies, and I do have them kind of lined up once upon a time i absolutely hated having babies all in one spot at the same time because i thought it looked very unrealistic however now i'm embracing my both mommy and collector side and some of these babies i just want to show off and have out but i just there's no way possible i can make it where they all have their individual space um Lily, Lily Grace, um, just really quick, Lily Grace and Piper, both very different babies, but both inspired by my first twin grandbabies that were born. Um, one became an angel baby and the other one is now over a year old, a little over a year old. And um, just different phases of when they were born. They were born at like very, 29 weeks old and it's little things about them that was inspired by their painting um, markings, maybe um, some of the coloring, just different little things. So I guess, you know, different things inspires us to paint differently. Now down here is two babies um, that are, that is Levi by Bonnie Brown, painted by Patricia Reborn's uh, babies, which is Baby Blessing. And then there is, um, Paris Mia Moore, which is my oldest reborn that I've had over eight years, maybe nine years now. Um, she was painted by Yogi y Londa Boy Glover. Um, I don't know what her nursery name is nowadays. Um, but then there is, and he, sometimes his coloring comes up a little more yellow than it is. But um, this is my... 
little hybrid baby. He is Christian Dior. Um, he is twin B with the Delia um, sculpt hands, I mean arms and tummy plate. But he has um, twin B legs and twin B head, of course. And he also was painted by me. And I absolutely love him. I know you guys, some of you guys have, may not have really seen him. But he is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. My sweet baby. I love him so much. Um, so, and then, yeah, that's nothing. And this is, um, gotta make sure. Okay. This is <laughs> Gabby the giraffe. And um, she's a little something else with her little earrings. Now I'm gonna turn some of this light over to this way and we're gonna go over here to the crib and over here in the crib we have um baby fiend well let's start with baby drew baby drew and i know some of you guys are really familiar with drew drew is the um andrew sculpt by miss mesa said and painted and rooted by me and then as you can see, this big foot belongs to Baby Phoenix. And Phoenix is also painted by me, but rooted by um, Sentimental Babies. And he is also my personal baby. And I've had him for a little while. And I just love him to pieces. He is the Limb Sculpt by Bonnie Brown. And um, I just love him. He's just, he's, he's like my whole world. And then down here in the rocker, which his coloring is probably not going to show up as good because of the light is off of him. But this is baby Archie painted by Paper City Dolls. And he is available for adoption as well. So these are my babies and I absolutely love them. I have a few more. Oh, I don't think I can show you guys that, but I'll include a thing because behind him is a whole bunch of chaos and I don't know how to do it without ruining the video and showing him but baby Memphis is also in here but I'll show a, some slide a, pictures of him as well in the midst of things and Memphis just for the record Memphis is um well I'll, I'll just show him and um include him in here but um I do have like a few other babies that are private babies that I can't show so I don't want to go turn the camera back that way. But some of the things I wanted to talk about in the next video is I want to talk about um, just some community doll topics, straight doll topics for the most part. Um, just like limited editions, are they gone? Are they you know, now going to be so... Um, large that it almost feels like they're not limited anymore um i feel like um i don't know i just feel like the limited editions to me this is just my unpopular opinion just meant more just carried more value they felt more like art to me um and i know that some may disagree i still love the unlimited kits um i mean take for instance limb by bonnie brown he's unlimited and I actually um, have a, another blank kit to paint of him. I will continue to buy the kit, support the sculptors because, I mean, we have to support our sculptors if we want them to continue to, you know, do well and want to sculpt for us. Um, so by all means, this is not to, you know, discredit them or take away from them. But I do honestly miss the days when there was real true limited editions that you chased behind and went after. I also feel like a lot of people are using the excuse of there's people bootlegging. And I don't know that I, do, that I agree with that. I think some people are probably thinking that it's going to solve the issue. And some are just, you know, wanting to do it because it's an easier way to make more money off the same scope, less work, more you know more money you know what I mean um and also um I just think that you know when you think about like Gucci and Louis Vuitton and stuff like that um I I'm sure they know that there are knockoffs being sold at the flea markets and corner stores and <laughs> you know whatever but they are not cheapening their brand by flooding the market with the same bag same shoes um 
as we know, as I feel, most high-end um, collectors or what people refer to as high-end collectors want rare and exclusive as well as high-quality brand names. And yes, I did say brand names because um, regardless of what we say and despite how others may feel about it, the brand does matter. Um, it does hold value. Yes, we pay for that name, but also that is what also um, keeps the resale value good. And why is the resale value important? Because a lot of times it's what it's the circle of life. It's what makes everything keep flowing. Um, the same collectors keep buying over and over from the same artists, same sculptors, because they will buy the baby and eventually when they get tired of it or they want something new, they sell it and another collector get to experience their artist's work and they move on to what the artist has new out, which keeps money flowing into the artist's pocket and also keep the average collector being able to upgrade their work. So anyway, I'll elaborate that on that more. We could talk about that more in our live chat when we all get together. But um, then there's also another topic that I want to hit on is the bottom line. Some of us are fighting and arguing about something that we really agree on, but we're all too stubborn to really just sit down and take the time to listen with an open mind what each one of us is trying to say. What is the real point? Some of us have different ways of expression, expressing our thoughts and our opinions, and it comes off off-putting and rude and sometimes even just, just makes people just hate you. <laughs> But um, a lot of times we're saying the same things, you know, like for example, and this may not be a good, good example, but kind of in the area. So like there's, you know, there's a group of people that say, I hate auctions. Um, we don't want it because we don't know the price up front and we don't know if we can afford them. And it's just frustrating to, you know, get your, your hopes up for something and then it goes so high and you can't afford it. And then others may argue that we like auctions because every now and then we can get a baby at a lower cost that we would have gotten if the artist had just stuck a high dollar price on the baby. But at the end of the line, the bottom line, we both want the same thing. We want lower prices and we want great babies for lower prices. So, um, I just, I think that sometimes, you know, people are fighting each other but they're fighting for the same cause. Now, some people are doing things and saying things for malicious reasons. I'm not going to get into that because that's their business. I'm just talking about those of us that are really, 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 truly here trying to collect all these babies that we love. And we just want to be able to continue to afford them as the prices does rise. And I do, as from an artist perspective, do understand why prices do have to rise and it, they will continue to rise. Even though I feel like the market is being flooded with so many painters and so many sculpts, I feel like the prices is still not going to affect the prices because there are going to be some people that work stands out. And there's going to be some people that scope stands out and they're going to still be able to demand the price that they want to pay. I mean, that they want to get because there are going to be collectors that are going to be willing to pay that price just to get that type of work. Um, the other thing is price checking um, and paying for egos. So this is a two part um, topic. And I don't know if we're going to be able to talk about all these things at one time in one live stream, but I definitely would love to open this up to everybody to just, you know, talk and just understand that we really need to support each other. We need to support collectors. We need to support artists. We need to support just keeping our industry going and, and thriving and doing well and, you know, do it in a healthy sense. We can have conversations and have healthy conversations where it doesn't you know, destroy someone in the process. So I feel like a lot of times for me, I definitely price check to a point where I like to know what is out there in the market. And I also like to know for two purposes, because I am a collector at heart and I want to know. So when I go out to buy something, whether it's firsthand or secondhand, that I am not overpaying market price or I'm not paying more than the, the doll is the going value and the reason why I do that because of the type of collector I am I do tend to sell my babies over time 
And so I do need to know that I'm not going to just lose a whole bunch of money because I'm not rich and I can't afford to keep doing that. Um, also, I want to know as from an artist perspective, because I want to make sure that I'm in a happy medium, that what I feel my baby is worth once I finish it is truly fair within the market. Like what is out there and basing, not basing off of where people actually price themselves out of the industry or pricing themselves based off ego like for instance oh my god she's making so and so much money off her dolls my dolls are way better than her dolls so I should get paid more I don't do it in that sense I do it like oh wait a minute she does extremely nice let's say for instance her rooting is amazing she's charging six hundred dollars for her rooting um, I definitely don't feel that I'm there yet. So I don't think I'm the worst though. So I'm going to charge 350 and I'm just throwing numbers out there because I don't want to overcharge, but I want to be fair, but I want to get paid for my time and my efforts in my work. And I think that more than not, we're actually paying for egos. I actually think a lot of the prices are inflated because people want to make sure that their price identify them as the best. Because, of course, if you guys, rather you agree or disagree, overall, the most people consider high-end the most high-dollar doll. It doesn't have to necessarily be that in quality. As long as it's high price, they feel like it's high-end. If you see a doll, like if I was the price, Andrew, right now for $1,000, people will assume automatically something is wrong with him and he's not a good baby. They would not consider him high end. But if I put a price on him like 5000 people would be like, okay, that's a high end baby. I probably want that one. It's mind over matter, I think. But anyway, if you guys are wanting to talk about these topics um, and just, you know, just have a conversation about collecting itself and just, you know, just sharing our opinions and thoughts in a healthy man manner, I don't want to be calling specific names specific sculpts you know I, I don't know like I don't I want to you know just have a conversation a doll collector conversation um if you think this is a good chat that we should have openly and you guys want to do that I will set a time and I will put the link in there just just anyway and if you want to join you can if you don't you don't have to, but I will set the link in the description bar and you can click the link and set a reminder so that you are there to join. Let me know guys what your thoughts are and I will see you guys in the next video. And don't forget on your way out to give me a thumbs up and share this video and, you know, comment. Bye.